give the Lord some praise. Amen. 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 Please be seated. Thank you, Sister Sister Battle. Appreciate that. How's everybody doing tonight? Good, 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 good. We um we started on a journey of prayer on June first. Kind of looked it up to see how long we've been doing this. June first. And I thought this would be a good time to ask you, how has the Lord blessed you so far? How has the Lord blessed you so far? So on uh, the first, we started our series with Han- Hannah's desperate prayer, her radical prayer. And that launched us off, and we talked from there about powerful prayers out of First Chronicles. Then we looked at priestly prayer, the priestly prayers of Jesus, and how different those prayers are from the standard prayer and what we can learn from it. Then we looked at Solomon and his prayer for wisdom and the wise prayer in praying for wisdom. And then last, we looked at focused prayer of the woman with the issue of blood. So all of those Bible studies are, hopefully you have them in your notes, hopefully you're referring back to them, hopefully you're looking at the online recordings and gleaning as much as you can get from them. Um, I've, I've, I've felt that they were powerful in, in and of themselves, the lessons, helpful in and of themselves is the feedback that I've gotten and um, just want to make sure that you guys are taking the time to, to ponder and to let that saturate and soak into your spirits, hopefully changing and improving the way that we pray. All right? So the Lord says that he promises to hear and answer our prayer. This is one of the foundational things in, in prayer itself. If if we didn't have that assurance, if God didn't give us that promise, then why would we pray? Why would we pray? Uh, But the Lord does give us that assurance, and he does teach us that that's the foundation of prayer. I'd like to start tonight off with Psalms chapter 4. And we're going to look at the first verse first. And, and see what God has said through his servant David. And the psalm reads, To the musician with stringed instruments, a psalm of David, Hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. You have relieved me in my distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. We've learned a lot <laughs> about God and how to relate to God. We've learned a lot about praise. We've learned a lot about worship. We've learned a lot about our relationship with God through David. David teaches us also how to pray. In this first, or I guess the second sentence where it says, hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. Do you see the the, the exclamation point at the end of that sentence. It was an exclamation point because in the original language, you understand that this was something that was said with force. It wasn't, oh God, <laughs> oh God, my righteousness, hear me. But it was, hear me when I call, oh God of my righteousness. He said it was what? Passion. He said it with force. He said it with, with a strength of conviction that God would indeed hear his prayer. Often, sadly, often when we pray, we don't always pray with much passion. It's not as though God is moved by the emotion of it, but, but God is moved when we are moved. 
God loves it when the things that he cares about are the things that we are passionate about. When he cares about something and we are passionate about what it is that he cares for, it brings something up out of us that gets the attention of God. So the man of God wasn't just repeating some words. If you're just repeating some words or you're just saying some things because that's, that's what we do, that's what you've learned to do in church, you just say these words. How many have ever caught yourself praying, caught yourself praying, and had a whole other thought going through your mind while you are praying? Come on now. That happens when we are not focused. That happens when we are not When you are in the middle of a passion, that kind of interruption doesn't occur. It doesn't happen. When you're in the middle of a passion, you're focused on what it is that you're praying about. You're determined to get that prayer through, and you're confident that God is hearing you. So when we look at the promise of God, that God promises to hear us and to answer us, we also have to understand that there's a big part, not just on God, but on who? But on us. There's a part of this that we have to shoulder. There's a part of this that we have to bear. There's a part of this that we have to understand. Jump down with me to... To, to the next part of that, that scripture says, you have relieved me, have mercy on me. You have relieved me. Is that present tense or past tense or future tense? You have relieved me. You have it's past. You have in your past, you've already been here before, Lord. You've already blessed me before. I'm going to use what you have done before now. I'm going to hold on to the past blessings because I expect a new blessing right now. I'm coming at you full of passion because I'm purposed in my heart to be passionate about the things that you are passionate about. And I'm conscious of the fact that this won't be the first time you've heard me. This won't be the first time you've answered my prayer. This won't be the first and it won't be the last. I believe God because of all God has done for me in the past. This is the same man who said, I can't forget all your many benefits. This is the same man that had the list that is so long. Some might come to God with a list this long of my wants. But the man of God came to God with a list this long of how you've already blessed me. Of all you've already done for me. I can rest. If you never do, do anything else for me ever again, you've already blessed me. You've already taken care of me. You've already heard me. You've already answered me. My faith is not contingent. My faith is not beholden to what you do right now because I just expect you're going to do what you've always done. I just understand that God is the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore, I just know that this same God that has blessed me, he's going to bless me again. When the child of God gets down on their knees and remembers, I have a God that is a God of promise. I have a God that is a covenant keeper. I have a God that's blessed me before. I have a God that changes not. I have a God that when he blesses, he knows how to bless yet again. When I, when I go down on my knees, I'm going down with a whole different head space, a whole different heart space. There's someone that just gets down and mumbles some words. There's someone that just gets down and has, I'm mumbling the words, but something else is running through my mind. 
I'm going down with a connection. I'm going down with a promise. I'm going down connected to God. I'm going down with a passion toward God. I'm going down believing. I believe he's going to answer me. I believe he's going to hear me. I believe he's active. He's active in giving me mercy. (laughs) He's active in giving me mercy. I already know he's going to give me mercy again. He's he's improved that. When when will we get to the point where God has proven himself enough? Now, hear me. We want God to prove himself again and again and again. Lord, if you don't answer this prayer and you don't answer it right now, ah, I don't know if you God no more. I don't know. I, maybe you out of the maybe you out of the prayer answering business now. Maybe you, like a lot of people don't went bankrupt now. Maybe you just don't went out of business. <laughs> you don't do that no more. Some people have that that same thought about everything regarding God. Oh, that stopped at Pentecost. Oh, we don't get the Holy Ghost no more. Oh, God don't do miracles no more. Oh, God don't heal no more. Oh, God, that all stopped back. Th- no, you don't get gifts no more. Some people have gotten stuck 2,000 years ago. And don't you start laughing at them when you stuck from two days ago. (laughs) God blessed you two days ago and you don't forgot that blessing already. Woo, I don't move on. (laughs) Come on. (laughs) The man of God said, but no. Okay, verse three. But no. But no. Do you want to know what the man of God, what David had in his heart? I know something about God. When you get down on your knees, do you know something about your God? Do you already believe something about, before the prayer goes up, do you already believe that it's going to be heard and it's going to or are you in that kind of, hmm, maybe? <laughs> it's possible. He said, but no. But no. That the Lord has set some things and some people, what? Apart. For him, self. The Lord has set apart for himself, him who is, I'm just trying to live this God life. I'm just trying to walk in my, my daddy's big shoes. <laughs> I, I can't fill out those big boots. But I, I, I'm, you ever seen a child just walk in his dad's shoes and just clunk around like, I'm just trying to be like my daddy? Or, or some daughter, I'm just trying to be like my mama. <clears throat> we just trying to be like our daddy. We just trying to walk in his shoes. We just trying to be like he is. We're just trying to be holy as he is holy. We're trying to be godly as he is godly. And the, and the, and the Lord knows that <laughs> just like the child walking in, in the parent's shoes, they're they going to trip and fall down. They're they going to look awkward. They're they going to they gonna stumble around. It, it's not going to be pretty. But it's going to be cute. God said, that, that's cute. Y'all trying to be like, like me. David said, in the mind of God, God's looking at that saying, that's, that's my son right there. I know he's awkward and he's stumbling around and the shoes are too big and he, he might fall any second. But I know he's going to get right back up. I, I, I know he's going to grow into it. I, I know he's going to become more than he is now. I know he ain't always going to be a baby. I know he's godly. He's godly. The man, David said, ah, Lord, you set aside that one that's walking and trying to walk in your shoes. That one is trying to look like you. That one that's trying to be righteous. That one is trying to be holy. That one is trying to be like God. He says, you set them apart. Why? You said they are special. They said you, you value them among, above all others. Don't you know when God, 
Don't you know when there's something that's special to you, when there's something valuable to you, you set that thing aside. You say, no, I, I, don't, I don't play in these shoes. Oh, no, no, this is my good dress. This is my good suit. Uh, I don't roll, roll around in the mud in this thing. No, this is my nice car. <laughs> this, is my, this is my nice silverware. This is my nice um, china. I'm going to set that aside. It's special. It's, val- it's, to, it's to be used for special times. Man of God was saying, I'm special to God. I'm special. When God looks at me, he sees something special. He sees something precious. He sees something worth dying for. Why don't you say that to yourself? I'm worth dying for. I'm special to God. I'm set aside. I'm set apart. You might look at me and say, you just look like everybody else. You ain't no better than anybody else. (laughs) If I'm walking in the mall, nobody might know the difference between me and a hundred other people. But God's looking at me and saying, hmm, that's my boy right there. He's special to me. The the, the other hundred, the other thousand, I don't care. They're not godly. They're not trying to be godly. They are not set aside. They're they're not set apart. I'm not listening to them. The Lord said in one place, he said, because of your sin, I won't see you. I put blinders before my eyes. I won't hear you. I won't, I'm not going to even listen to you. But the child of God, I'm going to see him. I'm going to hear him. I'm going to be moved by him. When he is moved, I'll be moved. When he is passionate, I'll be passionate. When he is seeking me, he's going to find me. We have to get that into our, we got to let this saturate our spirit so it saturates our prayer so that when we go before God, it's going to make a difference. It's going to make a change. God's going to see something different from you. God's going to hear something different from you than what he's heard before. Hallelujah. Do you ever set something aside because it's special? Why don't you say, I've been set aside. Because I'm special to God. I'm special to the Lord. The Lord is looking for somebody just like me. He said, well, I'm, I'm, I'm nothing special. Why do you keep calling God a liar? Why do you keep, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm nothing. I'm, I'm, I'm nothing. I'm just just me, you know. And I'm I'm just a sinner saved by grace. I, I'm I mess up a lot, and I, why you call God a bald faced, bold faced lie? When God Himself has said, "You are special to me. You are worth dying for." If He's ready to die for you. Don't you think he's ready to hear you? Don't you think it's easier to hear you than to die for you? If he'll die for you, don't you think he'll listen to you? Don't you think he'll say, what do you need, sir? If if you've ever, if you've ever tended, if you've ever cared for a baby, a crying baby, what one of us that's at all responsible if you heard a crying baby, wouldn't look to find out what's wrong. Wouldn't look to see, is, is he okay? Is she okay? Wouldn't look to see what's, what's going on. You're going to at least look to find out what's wrong with my baby, what's going on with my baby. And hasn't God said we are the children of God? We've been adopted by the Spirit of God that we cry, Abba, Father. Has God not said he is your father, he's your daddy? He says, pray like this, our father, Abba, Father, my daddy. Don't you know? Don't you know you're a child of God? Don't you know when your child cries out, somebody, some, don't you know God's going to hear you? God's going to hear you. You wouldn't be so irresponsible to leave some baby crying in a closet and crying in, in a basement someplace and wouldn't go check on him. 
Don't you know when you get in your secret closet and you cry out to your daddy, he's quick to run to you, to hear you, to see what's going on. That's my child. That's my special one. That's my set-aside one. That's, that's the one that I've got to hear. I've got to hear him. I've got to see what's on their mind. I've got to see what's on their heart. I've got to see what they're passionate about. Why are they crying out to me like that? I've got to hear. I've got to know. The Lord wants to change our prayer. He wants us to pray with more power, more conviction, more faith. The Lord wants us to receive of him the things that he has promised to give us. He says, the Lord will hear when I call to him. The Lord will hear the Lord. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? The Lord said, you have not because you believe not. Do you believe? I've got to go down in my prayers believing he's going to hear me. He's going to hear me when I call. He's going to hear me when I raise my voice. He's going to hear me when I lift up my call. He's going to hear me. Praise God. Praise God. Turn with me to Psalms 35, 34. Psalms 34. I pray the Lord is getting something deep down in your spirit. <coughs> I pray the Lord is moving in your spirit. Remember (coughs) Psalms 34, verse 15. The Bible says, the eyes of the Lord are. They're already on you. One place says that the eyes of the Lord go to and fro throughout the earth looking for somebody that has some faith in him. And guess what what happens when he finds that somebody? Then the Bible says the eyes of the Lord are. Once he has found you, do you think God is some senile granny that can't remember that he has found you? Do you think God loses you? (laughs) Some of us lose our keys. Some of us lose our shoes. We lose a bunch of stuff. Do you think God loses you? Do you think God forgets where you are? The Lord says, the eyes of the Lord are, are on the righteous. I just know where you are. I'm paying particular attention to who you are. I'm listening to what you've got to say. We have to have the promises of God saturated in our hearts because the enemy, his primary attack is to cause fear, uncertainty, and doubt. He wants to bring FUD in your life. He wants to bring all, don't you know fear is the enemy of faith? If he can bring some some fear in your life, he can bring some uncertainty in your life. If he can bring a little bit of doubt about the word of God, if he gets you to the point where you don't really believe your prayer, you don't believe it. I'll pray this prayer, but I don't believe God. It's going to do nothing. If he brings that fear, that uncertainty, and that doubt, that's spiritual warfare. Now he can dominate you. Now he can dominate you on the, on the field of battle. Whereas you should have had faith to just believe God's going to hear you and God's going to answer you. But, but, but since you don't believe, he's put that doubt into you. Now he can destroy. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He, he can destroy your faith. And the Lord says, if you ask anything without believing, you'll receive nothing. Oh, you mean this was a spiritual thing? Oh, you mean I was under attack? Oh, that doubt came from someplace? Oh, my fear, the fear that God won't hear me, the fear that God won't answer me, the fear that, oh, I'm not good enough, I'm not righteous enough, I'm not godly enough. Oh, you mean the enemy likes to put that? He likes to play the mind game. 
He wants to play that mind. If I can get your mind, I can get everything else that comes connected to it. If I can get your mind, I can get your heart. I can get you to thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it. And before you know it, your heart has changed. I've moved your heart. I've, I've gotten in there and, and changed some stuff. And if I can change your heart, oh, it won't be long before your will is changed. It won't be long before you, you acting different, you looking different, you doing different stuff. If I can get into the brain, I got you. I've got you. So I'm coming at you to battle you in your mind, to get you off your game, to think God ain't here and God ain't doing. I'm fighting you in your mind. We don't recognize that how many mind games that the enemy likes to play. Oh, that time when he attacks you and makes you feel like you can't go on, and that time when he attacks you and feels like you, you can't overcome, and that time when he attacks you and you feel like I, 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 everybody's against me, and the time he attacks you, and you say, well, I guess I'll give up. All along, it was just a war game. Who was the one who told us to pray? Would God tell you to pray when he knew nothing was going to happen? Would God compel you and command you to pray? When he knew that he was never planning to hear you or answer you. Is that what y'all think about God? Y'all think he's that kind of Sneaky, conniving, jerk God. Is that, what, is that what you think? Oh, he's telling me to do something, but I, he already know. He already know. I, I'm, 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 just, I'm just blowing smoke, and I'm, I'm just speaking to the roof. I'm just, I'm just sending. I know ain't nothing happening beyond this. this. If God... It's God. Let him be God. Just let him be God. Just let him be God. You will say he's a good God. I'm going to say he's a great God. (laughs) I don't even like that good stuff. I like the great stuff. But however you're going to come at it, if he's a good God, then believe that he's a good God. Believe that my good father is going to pay attention to my son. Believe that he loves me enough to take care of me. Believe that when he says, I'm Jehovah Jireh, he means it. Believe that when he says, I'm Jehovah, your peace, I'm Jehovah, your shalom, why won't you have your mind staying on him uh, that you can receive the peace of God? When he says that I'm Jehovah El Shaddai, why won't you believe he has the power for your situation? Oh, somebody got to believe. Somebody's got to believe God. Somebody's got to hold up God. Somebody's got to say, I believe God. Oh, I believe it. Oh, Lord, you've done so much for me. Oh, Lord, your many benefits. Oh, you've always been there. Oh, God, I know you've done it and you're going to do it again. Oh, you've given me mercy and mercy is coming my way. Oh, you've flooded me, Lord. You've blessed me, Lord, so much I can't even receive it. Oh, you're going to keep on blessing. You're going to keep on Somebody's got to get to a place where we believe God. I believe God. You've got to say, I believe God. 
I believe his promises. I believe what he's doing in my life. I believe all things work together for my, I believe it. I believe it. I believe, I believe God is working things in my, I believe promotion coming from the Lord. I believe that God is, oh, you've got to believe it. You've got to believe it. You've got to believe that God is going to protect you. You've got to believe that I'm surrounded by the angels. You've got to believe I'm under the blood of Jesus. You've got to believe the Holy Ghost is moving. You've got to believe I have power. I have power. I have power with God. You've got to believe I can, I can do all things. I believe it. You've got to believe it. If you're going to have anything in God, it comes with believing God. It comes with believing. That's, that's a prerequisite. That's part of it. Little faith will have little answer. Hallelujah. Much faith. Huh. Much faith. Much believe. Much knowing that God is God. Much, much. Sometimes the devil gets us all tripped up, tied up, turned around. Because it says, how long you been waiting, huh? How long you been waiting? Huh. Seems to me if, if God was God, by now he could have done something about that. <laughs> Fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Oh, I, I, I haven't got the Holy Ghost yet. Oh, oh, I haven't I haven't got my mate yet. Oh, 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 oh I haven't got that man of God yet. Oh, 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 I, I'm still by myself. Oh, oh, God hasn't given me that house yet. Oh, God hasn't. I'm still struggling with my kids. Still struggling with my marriage. Still struggling with my past weaknesses. I'm still struggling with that, that thing that wants to rise up in me. I'm still struggling with that other member that's in my body, that thing that when I want to do right, I still have to struggle. I still have to fight. I still have to slug it out. I mm. Why is it that we think that we are God? Why do you think you God? The Lord's timetable is the Lord's, not yours. If you believe what I said a moment ago, that all things are working together for my good, and yet and still you say, well, God don't move when I say move then he must not be God. I, I, I can't believe a God that won't do it when I say do it. I can't believe a God that won't jump around when I say jump. I can't believe a God that won't give me everything I've asked for when I ask for it. If he ain't instant, if he ain't on call, if he ain't a genie in a bottle and I don't rub the belly. If God has not moved, <laughs> if he's God, then he's God of the timetable too. If he's God, he'll know, he, he knows when to bless you. If he's God, he knows how to keep you. If he's God, he knows what will destroy you. If he's God, he knows when you're ready. And if he's God, he knows when you're not ready. And if he's God, let him be God. We got to learn faith and we've got to learn patience. We've got to learn faith, and we've got to learn patience. If I won't wait on God, then I don't truly believe God. You ought to get uncomfortable. You ought to, get to, you ought to feel like I'm just dancing up here on your shoes. I'm stepping all on your toes. We have to be patient with God. Do you believe that he knows more than you know? Uh, brother, I have to bring it down to it. I got to make it simple for us to get to. I, we'll say, 
<laughs> yeah, God won't give me what I want, so I gotta go get it, get it myself. I gotta go. I, I got. I gotta. <laughs> what do we say? I gotta make this happen. <laughs> I know how to make stuff happen. I know how to go out there and get the one I want. I know how to get something that's gonna make me feel good. I know how to get something that's gonna give me some peace. Well, I'm not. I'm not gonna be. I'm not gonna wait for the peace of Jesus. I'm gonna go out there and give me something I can drink or smoke, and I got. I'm. I'm peaceful. <laughs> I, I, uh, God. God won't take care of my loneliness, so I'm gonna go out there and find somebody that'll take care of my loneliness. God will hear and answer your prayer. He says, I'm set aside those that have set themselves aside (laughs) for me. When you say to yourself, self, I'm in the hands of the Lord. (laughs) When the incarnate God, when God incarnated was on the cross, (laughs) he says, into your hands, into you, God, I submit my spirit. What, 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 what's happening? I'm giving, I've always given everything to God. I've always trusted God for everything. And even at the point of my death, I'm still withholding nothing from the Lord. I'm still giving him everything. I'm still believing him for everything. Oh, oh, my soul is in the hand of the Lord. And if my most precious part, my most precious part, my soul is in the hand of God, don't you know my body's in the hand of God too? My life is in his hand. My life is in his hand. Lord, I'm going to believe you, Lord. Lord, I repent. I repent of my errors. I repent of my unbelief. I repent of my lack of faith. I repent of my doubt. I repent when I thought I was God. I repent if my rebellion, I repent of going my own. I repent when I said, if I don't understand it, I ain't going to do it. I repent. Some people say, well, I don't don't see it that way, so I ain't going to do it. God just says, if you love me, you're going to obey me. And when you obey God, he says, you've set yourself apart and you are special and godly. What you say? I got I want to hear more. What you say? I, I, I I want to bless you. How? When, when it's my time to bless you. Can we say amen? Amen. Can we say even when I don't see him moving, he's moving? (laughs) I kind of think, I kind of think that's a song that we sing. (laughs) Even when I don't see him moving, he's moving. Tell tell your neighbor, it ain't just a song. (laughs) <laughs> it ain't just a song. He is my way maker at all times. Praise God. Turn with me to, to Psalms 37 and 4. <coughs> I'm having a good time in the Lord. I hope y'all are too. <laughs> the Lord is helping us. The Lord is strengthening us. And the Lord is encouraging us. We can do better. The Lord is helping us to understand we will, we will do better. We, we're going to do better. We're going to see more of the move of God. We're going to see more of God doing what God wants to do. We're going to see more of the revival of God. We're going to see more of the revival of his word. We're going to do better. Psalms 37 and 4 says, delight, delight, delight yourself also in the Lord. And he shall give you. Don't you just love the word of God? 
Don't you just love it when God just, Deacon, he just makes it what? Plain. When, when, when he just speaks out and says, uh, can, can you hear me now? He says, just delight yourself in the Lord and he shall give you the, de- you mean if I desire, if I delight in God, God's going to delight in me? Hmm. Hmm. You mean if I delight in God, God's going to give me the desires of my, hmm. Hmm. Is that not a promise of God? Is that something that you can believe, sister? Is that something you can believe, brother? Is that something you can hold on to? I'm going to believe God. I'm going to believe. All I got to do is just delight in him. All I got to do is just try, strive for him. All I got to do is just be godly. All I got to do is just believe God. All I got to do is hold on to him. And God is going to take care of everything else. God's going to give me the desire. God's going to bless me. God's going to move in my life. I can't be God. I cannot be God. I can't know more than God. I can't be wiser than God. I can't know what's best. Have you not said at some point in time that God has been better to you than you have been to yourself? Mm, You ought to believe that. (laughs) You ought to believe that. God just desires you to be passionate. Can you be the one that says, I'm going to delight in the Lord? I'm going to be the one that delights in God. What, What does that mean? What does that look like? It means that whatever God loves, I'm going to love more. Whatever God hates, I'm going to hate more. I'm going to love what he loves, and I'm going to hate what he hates. I'm going to look like he looks. I'm going to seek after him with my whole heart. Why? I'm just, I'm going to withhold nothing. I'm just going to give God everything. I just want to look like him. I want to smell like him. I want I, I, I just, I want to delight in him. I want to delight in him. Do you want to delight yourself in the Lord? Do you want to delight yourself in God? This is not an academic exercise. This, this, you, you, I, I know you in Bible school, but, th- but this, ain't, this, this, this ain't just test-taking material. Th- this, this is a life-walking material. Th- this, this is how we live, sister, not, 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 not just what we know. Th- this is what God wants from us on a day, two day, 365, seven days a week. I'm going to delight in the Lord. That means some things will change in my life. Some people are get, going to get dropped out of my life. <laughs> y- y'all, y'all ever heard <laughs> dropping somebody <laughs> like a hot potato? <laughs> uh, I've had to drop people. If, if you walk with God any period of time, <laughs> some people are just not going to walk this walk. Some people are not going to go this direction. Some people might try to hold me back. Some people might try to turn me aside. Has the Lord not said, don't let anybody steal your crown? Has the Lord not said, how can two walk this way? Unless they are in agreement. How can I be like God if somebody's trying to draw me off to not be like God? Praise God. Why? Because I'm delighting in God. I prefer the company of God. I prefer the pleasure of God. I, bl- I prefer having God says, well done, sister. Well done, sister. Oh, well done, good and faithful sister. I, I, I want to hear him say that. I don't care if you say that. I want to hear the Lord say, well, well done, well done, well done. And I'm going to pray that God gives me the strength. I'm going to pray that God gives me the ability. I'm going to pray that the Lord opens the right doors, but I'm also going to pray that the Lord shut some of them tight. I'm going to pray, Lord, Lord, you be my light. You be the lamp unto my feet. Lord, you just lead me the way you know, it just crossed my mind. Some of y'all have never prayed that prayer. Some of y'all don't, don't know about that prayer. Lord, open the gates of heaven and pour out a blessing that I can't receive. Now, y'all, yeah, I'll probably know that one. But do you know the one that says, and close them? 
I don't know if y'all been praying that, but it's time for you to grow up and start praying that. Close some things. Some doors that I don't need for you to have open, Lord. Some doors are doors to my destruction. Some doors are doors to my demise. Some doors are doors, hallelujah, to my weakening of my faith. Some doors I don't need to go through. Lord, shut them. Shut them. Shut them. Shut them. Don't. I need you to protect me. I need you to protect me. I'm a grown man, and I need God to protect me to protect my mind, to protect my desires, to, to, to protect my action. Lord, I need you to. Hallelujah. Why? Because I'm delighting in him. I just want God, sister, I just want God to be happy. If God is happy with me, everything's right in my, my world. <laughs> everything's right in my world. Praise God. Amen. Are we getting something out of the Lord this morning? This evening, are we seeing what God is trying to do? Turn with me to 1 John chapter 5, and I'm winding up. I'm winding up. 1 John chapter 5, and we're going to go to verse 14. And I'm going to have a few questions for you once, we've, once I've wound it up. St. John chapter 5, verse 14. Now it says, now this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. That's a flat, bold statement, and we just have to receive it like God said it. He didn't stutter. <laughs> he didn't stutter. He, he didn't obfuscate that. He, he didn't make it all cloudy and hard to see. He just, he just, I'm boldly telling you that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. You know, I could go all night just about pointing scripture out to you like this, that God hears us that God wants to move on our behalf. And if we know that he hears us, verse 15, and if we know that he hears us, how many of us today can say we know he hears us? If, if I don't have 100%, if I don't have 100% by now, if I don't have 100% by now, I, I'm going to have to start all over. If I don't have 100% by now, I, I don't know if I, I can do it. 100% should be saying, he hears me. He hears me. John says, and if we know that he hears us. We, we don't got past the if, right? All right. Whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. Whatever we ask, we know automatically that God is already moving. He's already moving. He's already moving. Remember, his timetable is not your timetable, but he's already moving. His thoughts are not your thoughts, but he's, he's already moving. He's going to make it all work out for your good. He's already moving. He's already working it out. Turn with me to Jeremiah chapter 33. I want to give you a few more promises. I want you to understand these promises, and you should write them down because you need to memorize them. You need to saturate your spirit, sister. You need to saturate your spirit, brother, with these promises. So that when you go to the Lord in prayer, these scriptures are already on your lips, already in your heart, already on your mind. <laughs> I'll come to God with the word of God, and God will pay attention to his word. God will always, he says, my word won't return unto me void. It won't return unto me empty. It's always going to accomplish a purpose. Set out that word to accomplish a purpose for you. Jeremiah 33 and 3 says, call on me. Write this down. Call to me, rather. Call to me. And what? 
and I will answer you. I want you to repeat that after me. Call to me. This is speak call says, God says, call to me. And I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. <laughs> God just had to throw that little bit in there, Sister Maria, just, just to let you know a little something, something. You don't know all the things that you need to know. Just he's going to put that in there to let you know, uh, I know better than you do, sister. I know better than you do, brother. I, I, just, just understand, I got you. I'm going to do the right things by you. You might not always understand what I'm doing, but I'm doing the right thing. Can you say amen? amen. I will answer you and show you what? Great and mighty things. Woo! Woo! Don't ever be satisfied with the small things only. Well, I, we appreciate all things, including the small things, but I'm not complacent to only want the small things. I want God to do what God wants to do. I want God to be big. I want him to do big things. God himself encourages us and says what? What does he say? And I'll show you great and mighty. I can't look at God and say, well, God, you say great and mighty, but I just want teeny weeny. <laughs> I, I, I'm just telling you, God, don't give me great and mighty. Give me teeny weeny. That's all. I <laughs> God, you said great and mighty. Lord, you are God. All by Be great. Be mighty in my life. Overturn things. Chase enemies. When, when one comes in, Chase them seven ways out. Lord, you be the conqueror. Lord, you make me more than a conqueror. Lord, hallelujah. Be great and mighty. I'm not saying I'm going to be great. I'm not saying I'm going to be mighty. But I'm saying God is great and he is mighty. And I want a great and mighty God to do great and mighty things in my life. Can we say amen? Can you believe that God wants to do great and mighty things in your life? Oh, yes, he does. Oh, yes, he does. The one that won't believe that is the one that won't get it, but yes, he, uh-huh, yes, he does. I love that. I love that. The Lord says in Luke 11, Luke 11 and 9, he says, I know you're familiar with this scripture. He says, so I say to you, Jesus speaking, Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will. These are all positive promises of a God that cannot lie. Of a God that cannot lie. So you trying to tell me that God says, I got to ask? Yes, you got to ask. But you, you trying to tell me that if I ask, God's going to give it to me? If you ask, it will be what? It will be what? <laughs> did, 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 did Pastor Battle just make that up? <laughs> Sister Rosanna, did I just add to the scripture? <laughs> And it shall be, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be open to you. I got two more. You can go ahead and cue up, brother. Psalms 91 and Micah chapter 7. Before you go there, before I end it on the note of promises, I, 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 I thought I would just take a moment, just take a moment and share with you a little bit of why we sometimes don't get answered prayer or what sometimes why the prayer is not answered the way we want them or think they should be answered. What are some of the reasons why we don't have answered prayer? I've given you a bunch of them tonight, but what are some of the reasons? No belief. Don't believe. Unbelief. Um, if you're still writing, write down. I'm not going to go to the scripture, brother. Just write it down. Uh, Matthew chapter 17, 20 through 21. Matthew 17, 20 through 21. Unbelief. You have not because you ask not. If you don't believe God, if you don't ask believing, you shall not receive. 
if you know you struggle with faith or unbelief, this is this is this is the scripture to get it you to get into your spirit. And all of these promises that I'm giving you, you got to dig into them. They've got to become a part of you where you just believe God. What are some of the other reasons? Trusting, not trusting, that's, that's, that's this kind of kind of the same thing. The, yeah, that's we're still on the same same road. What about huh? It's not his will. It's not his will. What did you say, sis? Sometimes we can be prideful. Yeah, that, that would be um, not abiding in God. So write down St. John chapter 15, verse 7. So we read earlier, he set aside those that are godly. If we're prideful, that means we're no longer abiding in God. If we're prideful, that means we're not walking godly. You can't be walking, that, that's that's walking devilishly. It's the devil who is prideful. It's the devil who's always talking about himself. It's the devil that's all puffed up. Absolutely. If you're, going not, if you're being disobedient, you're not abiding in God. If you're being disobedient, you're not being godly. Amen. So we got um, not abiding in God, unbelief. Matthew 17 and 21 says, Sometimes we don't receive because we are in a spiritual warfare that requires fasting and prayer. Some of us just won't fast. Some of us will not, we just won't do it. We just won't do it. My, my body is, is, is in control. My body is running things around here. I, 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 can't, I can't control it. That's what some people, you might not say those words, but that's, that's, what, that's, what you, that's what's going on. Lord says some things don't, don't happen except for prayer and fasting. Some, the disciples were praying for the spirit to be cast out, and they, that spirit is like, hmm, I, I, mm, no, y'all y- y- ain't got it. Y'all ain't got it. No, no. <laughs> no. No. Jesus comes along and says, hey, scat. <laughs> get, 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 to get, get. <laughs> and, and the disciples said, we did that. <laughs> we said that. <laughs> what happened? What, what? Jesus said, some things, you got to have more power. You got to be more prepared. Some things only happen through prayer and fasting. So sometimes your prayer won't be asked, answered because you haven't fasted with God. Praise God. Turn with me to 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3. All of y'all need to get there. 1 Peter chapter 3. I don't think it's on, on, my, on my slides. And what does it say in verse 7? 1 Peter 3 and 7. Y'all need to pay attention. It says, husbands, likewise dwell with them, their wives, with understanding, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel. I have a whole study on that. We'll do another time. And as being heirs together of the grace of of the grace of life, that your prayers may not be hindered. I don't spoke to, I don't know how many people. And they didn't know that this scripture was in scripture. Y'all need to hear this. Sometimes our prayers are not answered because we're not in right relationship with our husband or our wife. Oh yeah, that's right. That's, you, that's, that's what the word said right there. He says, I, just because some people are looking at me like, hmm. It says, husbands likewise dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to his wife as to the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that, that your prayers may not be hindered. Oh, my prayers could be hindered because of my relationship, because I'm not getting along at home. 
And you thought it was the devil. <laughs> and it's you. <laughs> you better get it right. You better get that right too. God says, I see you as one together. And if y'all all split apart, mm, 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 y'all not listening to me. Y'all not being obedient to me. Y'all not bringing me no glory. Don't you know the first reason for having a marriage is to bring God glory. If you shame in his name, even if nobody else see it, you know what's going on in, behind them doors. You shame in his name, God said, huh, I ain't even going to bless you. Until you can get that stuff together, I ain't even going to bless you. A lot of people have, have prayers that are not answered because of the relationships they have at home. Because they're not honoring their husband or they're not honoring their wife. And bad things happen. I'll come back to that another day. Um, James 5 and 16. The Lord says we can not have prayers answered because of unconfessed sin. I got sin in my life. And by that, it doesn't mean that I've fallen short in some way, but it means that I have continued in my sin. Oh, I may have slipped up once and, and God would have just forgiven that if I had confessed it. But when I continue on doing what I keep on doing and I gotten hard headed about it and I decided I'm going to keep on doing it. I want to do it and I'm going to keep doing it. God says, hmm, I know how to handle that. I know how to handle that. You on your own. I won't answer your prayer. Psalm 17 and 1 says, because of lying and deceit. Somebody said, well, not a, not a saint of God. No saint of God wouldn't lie and deceit. I don't have some ministers in my face lying to me. I don't have pastors lie to me. <laughs> I don't have saints lie to me and deceit. And the Lord said, I'm not going to bless you. Proverbs 28 and 19, if you turn there. One who turns away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer is an ad. What? Even his prayer is abominable. Even his prayer is an ad. ad what? You mean my prayer is an abomination? What? The Lord says, you won't hear my word. You won't do what I told you to do. You, you won't be where I told you to be. I said, assemble yourselves in the church. You're supposed to be in church, and what are you doing? Oh, you're an abomination. Oh, you, you're supposed to be listening to God, and you're doing what? you listening to what? you listening to what? What kind of music you got going on? What, 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 what you looking at? What? what, what? I could deep, get deep into that one. One who turns away his ear from hearing the word of God, even his prayer is an abomination. I wonder, I guess I, I'm going to get back to the promises. <laughs> but this is a promise too. I'm trying to say the Lord wants to hear us and the Lord wants to help us. We got to hear both sides and we got to understand. We got to understand this thing. Is somebody getting an understanding? Turn with me to Psalms 91 and 14. We're going to end this on a high note. Psalms 91 and Micah chapter 7. We're going to end this on a high note. I want to thank the Lord for all that he's done. So I say to you, no, I'm sorry, because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. We are people of the name. We are people of Jesus. Amen. Because he has known, if anybody knows the name of God, it's us. <laughs> it's us. We some Jesus name people. It's us. It's us. He shall call upon me. And what's going to happen? What's going to happen? 
and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. Somebody, anybody in here ever been in trouble? Oh, <laughs> uh, y'all don't be embarrassed to hold up your hand. Come on, just, just go ahead. I, I got both my hands up, all right? <laughs> all right? And the Lord says, I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and I will honor him. Isn't that a beautiful promise of God? When you're in trouble, you ought to say, the Lord is with me. The Lord will never leave me. The Lord will never forsake me. The Lord will be present with me in a time of trouble. The Lord will deliver me out of every trouble. And he's going to, first, uh, Micah chapter 7 and 7. And this is what it says. Therefore, I will look to the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Just give the Lord a hand. My God will hear me. My God will hear me. We sometimes sing that song, Blessed Assurance. This is that. This is our blessed assurance. My God will hear me. My God will hear me. Sister Sandra, when you in a when you in a bad situation, what? My God, He's gonna be with me. Sister Yetta, when 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 trouble's all around you, my God is gonna deliver me. He's gonna deliver me. Brother, brother, when 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 you don't know what to do, you say what? My God will never leave me nor forsake me. Y'all getting it now. Y'all understand what I'm saying. Amen. 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 We're a people of his name, and we believe the word of God. And we're going to have faith in our prayer. Praise God. All right. All right. All right. Well, thank you. I went a couple minutes over. Um, I hopefully, it was, it was well worth it. Amen. Um, we're getting ready to pick up our offering, but um, I want to give you an opportunity to ask any questions. And I got a question or two for you, too. Brother, would you help me out, Deacon? <laughs> Praise Sister, Sister Yet. Yeah. I don't need a mic, but... Yeah. No, okay. <laughs> okay. This was so good because I was reading on, on my daily word, mm -hmm. and they, they took me to the book of Jeremiah, uh -huh. and it started at... 33 and on in when Jeremiah was trying to tell them this is what God said that y'all need to do and they kept on kept on not listening and they kept defying him and all the things that he was saying mm. and trying to tell him he mm. said if I tell you what God say do you promise that you ain't gonna do this mm -hmm. and you know and and that's what I love because God's promise he he made sure that he used that word promise in it yes. throughout the whole book when he was going to all those kings and and it's telling them what God is telling them that and that this is the same thing when I felt like God was telling us we got to listen yes we got to listen to what he is saying to us that we need to do it with our prayers and keeping not worrying because I wrote down yeah I just want to say what I Right. That not worry part is important. Yeah, mm -hmm. because as I was reading, I wrote this down because on the bottom of it, it says, what was your thought? And I said, to trust God uh -huh. and have faith in God, knowing that he is with me. <laughs> so That's beautiful. This, this, I know that is nothing but God in, in his word and telling us what we need to do because we have to trust him. That's right, we do. Amen. Let's give her a hand, please. We have to trust him. And, and to take that a step further, sis, we want to trust him. Not just have to, we want to. We want to delight ourselves in the Lord. Ricky? Ricky, we want to delight ourselves in the Lord, right? Amen. Amen. You got any question or comment, brother? Okay. Okay. Anybody else? No? Okay. Um, sis, I have leftovers. 